Hi, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and my own spiritual journey today. I grew up in a religious family. All four of my grandparents had immigrated from Eastern Europe, and part of what they brought with them was not only a culture, but a way of being family that intertwined that religion and culture and family life together. And I think that that experience really laid a foundation for me for understanding spirituality is integrated with every aspect of life. Something else that I learned from my family had to do with the fact that my mother's family was Roman Catholic. That's the average kind of Catholic that you typically think of. My father's family was Byzantine Catholic. Byzantine Catholics look a lot like Russian or Greek Orthodox in terms of their ceremonies and rituals and the way they dress and do things. So from childhood, I grew up with this sense of there being more than one right way to do things. There was always another way of doing things. And so I never got hung up on things needing to be exactly one way because I grew up in a situation where there was always an alternative way to pray or to celebrate a holiday or things like that. Um, my mother would have told you that I always wanted to be a priest and I was ordained and I continue as an ordained minister. But what's important about that isn't the ordination, it was my preparation and studying theology. I found theology to be overly intellectual, flat, almost like studying philosophy. And I was much more interested in how people experience the divine, not definitions of the divine. So it's not surprising that I enrolled in a master's program in spirituality. In the 1970s, there weren't a lot of those around. The one that I applied to was a very international program. Uh, so I studied with people from around the world, which was a really enriching experience, and learned with them about uh, mystics and prayer and the history of spirituality in the West and, and many other things. I did that while I was also working as a healthcare chaplain, a hospital chaplain. So I would leave class and go to the hospital and be with people who were facing serious illness, long-term illness, families coping with uh, individuals in their family having been in very serious accidents. And it really uh, put me in a context where I had to take that spirituality stuff that I was learning and, and put it in a real world life of suffering and pain and, and things not coming together in the way people expected. So that's really helped me to look at spirituality from that very real life kind of experience, not as something disjointed from life, but something really embedded in life. In the hospital, I met uh, Jewish rabbis who introduced me to Jewish spirituality as well as to the Jewish mystical tradition of Kabbalah. Uh, and that was my first step out of Christianity and, and uh, was a very enlightening experience because the vocabulary was similar, but yet the tradition was very different. Perhaps the most unusual thing that I did was to work with a group of Hare Krishna devotees who wanted to learn more about Christian spirituality and meditation. I worked uh, with this group for a few months, and while I would go to their community, I would stay with them for meals and uh, attend services in their temple. And that introduced me to Hinduism. Uh, it was clearly from the Hare Krishna sect, but it opened me to the sense of divinity as being very much broader than what I grew up with as a Christian. I've since learned from other Hindu people and been in other temples uh, and really have an appreciation for the beauty of the religion. I've also studied with a Zen Roshi who became a good friend of mine and attended a Christian and Zen uh, meditation group where Christian people and Zen Buddhist people did meditation together and would talk about our experience and share from the teachings of, of our traditions. And, and that was uh, really helpful in terms of understanding how metaphors, the language we use, can be very relative at talking about that inner experience. I learned compassion meditation within a uh, Tibetan Buddhist uh, monastery, which 
is a very different kind of expression of Buddhism. Same core teachings, but the Buddhism looks very different uh, among uh, Tibetan people. And perhaps the most significant thing for me was uh, being invited to learn from Native American elders, medicine people, healers, and being introduced to traditional stories and invited to participate in ceremony and drumming circles. And that really expanded my sense of spirituality as not being just about individuals, but individuals within a cosmos where everything is alive and everything shares spirit. Uh, and I've really appreciated the things that I've learned from Native American people in a very deep way. As I look at all of those experiences and ones I haven't shared, where I am today is realizing that while my first language for spirituality is indeed Christian, that's the first language I learned, and those are the metaphors I understand best, that it really is like speaking a different language. There are, the languages may be different, but they're metaphors describing an inner experience that's beyond words. So it's important not to get too caught up in the language. The language only has use to the degree that it helps us explain our experience. But what's ex important is the experience and not how we define it. And I believe that experience of spirituality is within us. It's not outside of us, but within us. And it's meant to help us live in a way that's creative and purposeful and meaningful, that gives us energy and life and leads us into further growth. Thanks for your time today. Please be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and leave me some comments so that I can be sure to respond to you.